Hey, what's going on? Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff out the Madden cheese as always. Today, I'm starting uh, some Madden 22 content. If you guys follow this channel for a while, you know that between uh, Maddens, I typically like to do a lot of preview content about what I expect uh, for Madden 22. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over the NFL Draft. And I'm going to do a couple things. Number one, I'm going to show you guys the best teams to rebuild if you're a franchise player when Madden 22 drops. These are going to be the best teams based off of the draft to rebuild in Madden 22. I might actually do some rebuild videos here in Madden 21 using the updated rosters. If you guys want to see that, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. But I'm also going to give you guys my predictions for uh, Madden 22 uh, drafted players' ratings, whether that's important ratings like overall or speed or whatever. I'm going to have some fun with that as well in this video. One of my favorite teams in Madden year after year when I use regular teams is the Carolina Panthers. I absolutely love the Carolina Panthers last year. Their biggest issue though was Teddy Bridgewater had a pea shooter for an arm. That's not a problem anymore. They went out and they traded for Sam Darnold. So this guy right here has a, almost a 90 overall throw power. You're going to get much more use out of these uh, speech to receivers that they have. So guys like Robbie Anderson, who's you know one of the better deep threats in the game, 6 foot 3, 90, 94 speed. Guys like Moore, who's a speedster. They lost Curtis Samuel, who was one of the fastest receivers on this team, but they drafted Terrence Marshall in the second round. This guy is six foot three. I could see him easily being a 93 speed or higher. Here he's listed at 92. But between those three speedsters alone, you have a very dynamic uh, offensive set. And then they also have, uh, you know, we all know about Christian McCaffrey. They drafted uh, Chuba Hubbard, who's a very good uh, prospect at running back. I mean, you could try to trade Christian McCaffrey and work Hubbard up. There's a lot of options here. And then they went and added A.J. Boye and uh, J.C. Horn in the draft. So their secondary is going to be a lot better. Jeremy Chin, we all know he had a monster year last year. He's a beast, six foot three. So this is a team that, in my opinion, is one of the better ones to build on in the upcoming uh upcoming Madden 22. Another good team is the Ravens. I mean, they already have Lamar Jackson. They already have some really good young running backs like J.K. Dobbins, who they drafted last year. They tried to go a little bit more heavy in the receiving category, and I think they came away with three pretty good ones. Sammy Watkins, who they signed in free agency. Marquise Brown, who we all know is one of the fastest players in the game. And then they went ahead and drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round. So, between those three receivers, that quarterback, and these running backs, I mean, the offense is going to be legit. They also had a pretty good uh, draft pick at the defensive end spot, uh, which I don't even see him here. So they, maybe they have him listed as an outside linebacker. But Oa out of Penn State, I mean, this guy is a physical freak. This guy here has him listed as a 94 speed. I find it hard to argue. I think he ran like a 4-3 or something like that. This guy's going to be one of the faster edge-rushing rookies in the game this year. So their top two picks alone are definitely something that, uh, you know, Baltimore Ravens fans could be excited about. I mean, this is one of the best teams every year. But now that you have a receiving core like this to add, to um, you know, add to this offense around Lamar Jackson, I and mean, this is going to be one of the best offenses in the game. Next up, we got the Bears. That's right. This team here is pretty good every year. It's just you know they never really have a good quarterback. I mean, last year they're dealing with Nick Foles. They brought in Andy Dalton, Mitch Trubisky, all types of bums. Now you have a guy who's a 90 speed, 90 throw power prototype to build around in Justin Fields and he's going to be one of the most exciting players in Madden next year. I could see this guy uh, easily being one of the most uh, used and most sought after players in the game because of his physical attributes. The weapons around him are kind of mediocre and average uh, but based off the fact that you finally have a great quarterback and you also have a great defense to start off with, the Bears is going to be a very good team. They also drafted a really good left tackle uh, in Tevin Jenkins um, who I think is one of the better uh, tackles in the entire draft. So whether the Bears got a good quarterback in real life or not doesn't really matter in Madden. This is going to be uh, one of the better teams to build just because of Justin Fields. Next up, we got the Bengals. This is a team that was on the list last year because once they drafted Joe Burrow, their offense looked pretty good. Uh, Joe Burrow had a great first year. He should be easy to work up. They have a decent running back in Joe Mixon, but ultimately the receiving core. If I was a fan of the Bengals, I probably would have preferred a lineman, but as a fan in Madden, I'm happy they went with a receiver. Jamar Chase is probably going to be the best receiver on this team, and they already have two really good receivers in T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, so this is going to be a receiving core. It's going to be easy to work up, and this is going to be one of the best offenses in Madden. They did draft a guard in the second round, so they did, um, you know, they did address 
uh, that a little bit, which I'm not even seeing. Maybe he's listed as a tackle. I'm not even really sure, but yeah, he's right there. So Jackson Carmen gives you a little bit something to work with. Uh, but overall, I mean, they have a lot of young linemen. This is going to be a young offense that if you're a good Madden player, you should be able to work up pretty fast. Next up, we got the Browns. I mean, the Browns have been building one of the best rosters in football over the last couple of years, uh, and it, it continued in this draft. They had a couple of picks that I really like. They went defense heavy. They drafted uh, another cornerback in Greg Newsom. I mean, they already had Greedy Williams from a previous draft, uh, Denzel award so you got three young cornerbacks and young cornerbacks in my opinion have a lot of value when it comes to franchise uh, whether it's in trades or you know whatever then in the second round they drafted which I thought was one of the better players in the entire draft uh, in Jeremiah Awusu Koromoa this guy here I don't think this is going to be his rigs I think his rigs is going to be a lot higher he'll probably be in my opinion like a 75 overall 76 overall maybe a little bit closer to 90 speed but this guy should have uh, I don't know how good of a, a job this guy did making this guy but he should have some of the best coverage stats of any linebacker in the draft he's one of the best coverage guys out there and i think that these zone and man coverages should probably be up a lot higher as well i think they'll probably be like in the 70 to 80 range add that to the fact that they added davion Clowney to uh, miles garrett i mean you're gonna be able to get to the quarterback they also got malik jackson you're gonna be able to get to the quarterback you're gonna have great coverage on the back end one of the best teams in madden uh that probably doesn't even really need to be built too much next up we got the cowboys nobody would argue that this offense is pretty set between Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, the receiving core, Cooper, Gallup, and Lamb. You don't probably have to put any work into this offense. Maybe a lineman or two, although they still have some pretty good linemen, but the defense is pretty porous, and that's where they spent their entire focus on the draft. Their first like five picks or so were all you know linebackers, cornerbacks, safeties, defensive linemen, you name it. They really went heavy in that spot. So they already had some pretty good linebackers in Vander Esch and Jalen Smith, and then they went ahead and added Mika Parsons who I think, once again, this speed rating looks kind of low to me. I think his overall might be low to me as well. He'll probably be like an 80 overall with a 90 speed, something in that range. So he's going to be an absolute monster. I didn't even see Jabril Cox. This guy here is a pretty good specimen too. I don't think he's faster, but this is a guy who's probably had a, a second round grade, uh, but based off of injuries, he was drafted a lot lower. So they went really heavy with the linebackers. They also drafted uh, a cornerback, Trevon, or Trevon Diggs, obviously, they drafted last year. This year, though, they drafted Calvin Joseph, um, who's a very obviously physically talented player. You can see right here, he's got him raised at 95 speed. I don't know if he'll be that fast, but the guy has all the physical traits, and he's supposed to be a really good cornerback, just has some off-the-field issues, which obviously don't play when it comes to Madden. So so their offense is pretty set. Might have to work up a couple young guys there, but the defense is loaded with young players across the board, so they should be able to make up a pretty good defense pretty soon. Next up, you know that the, uh, the team with the number one pick in the Jacksonville Jaguars definitely had to be on this list. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, he's a guy, I mean, I don't know if his speed is going to be that high as an 84, but ultimately Trevor Lawrence is going to probably have all the development traits and everything you need to make him a superstar pretty fast. They also have some pretty good running backs with Travis Etienne, uh, who they just drafted in the, uh, I think he was a late first, and James Robinson, who obviously was already a pretty good player last year, had a, had a Pro Bowl season as a rookie. Uh, as far as the receiving core goes, you probably need a little bit of work there, uh, but they do have some young players that, you know, for the most part, this should be a pretty good offense. They also drafted a cornerback pretty high. They have some pretty good young cornerbacks to work with uh, between Shaquille Griffin and uh, CJ Henderson, who they drafted the first last year. Now Tyson Campbell, who to me has a very good physical profile, six foot one. I don't know if he'll be 94 speed. I think he's probably closer to like a 93, whatever. He's still a very fast player. This team has had a lot of draft capital over the last two seasons, so they're going to have a lot of young talent to work up on both sides of the field. This is definitely one of the best teams to rebuild. The Dolphins are another team that has a ton of draft capital over the last couple years. Plus, if you take them a franchise, they have probably uh, a lot of future picks as well. Um, Tua is obviously a, a young quarterback you can still build up. But what really excites me about this team is their receiving core. They added Will Fuller in the offseason, 95 speed. And Jalen Waddell was their number one pick. Uh, who uh, We don't know what his speed is going to be. The guy didn't run a 40 at his pro day, I don't think. Uh, but he's known to be you know one of the fastest guys in the draft. He's compared to Tyreek. Kill so I would imagine 97 would be the least. Uh, maybe he's 98, but he's this year's Henry Ruggs. He's this year's super speedster that's getting added to the game, and he's a 
quick twitch athlete too. The guy should have agility and acceleration. He should just be an absolute monster when it comes to uh, the measurables that matter. They did also add Jalen Phillips, an edge rusher in the draft, and overall they had a very strong draft. So this is one of those teams you're going to get a lot of young talent and you're going to have a lot of draft picks to, to use in the future as well. The Giants are another team that's doing big things. They traded back in the draft so they got a future first from the uh, Chicago Bears so we'll see how much that turns out but having two first round picks is always good uh, when you're picking a team for a franchise. Um, they have great receiving core. I mean they you know Daniel Jones not a fan of his uh, but the talent around him is amazing. Between Saquon Barkley being one of the best running backs in the game uh, you go to tight end. Evan Ingram was one of the fastest tight ends in the game. I love that uh but you go to the receiving core i mean you got receivers for days here uh kenny galladay's easily the best uh you know i would probably try to trade sterling shepherd uh darius slayton's a stud as well 93 speed then you got Kadarius tony they got in the first round i don't know if he's gonna be 96 speed but he should definitely have a pretty high uh speed strength and agility combination because he's one of the you know one of the bigger explosive playmakers when he gets the ball in his hand he's very uh hard to tackle guy so i would imagine those would all be very high and then they also have john ross who they picked up and probably won't do anything for them in real life but he's another super speedster to have on this roster so you got five receivers deep plus you know you could play evan ingram as a receiver he's that good as, as a receiver so they're loaded on the offensive side of the ball and they had a couple of high draft picks on the defensive side of the ball they did go out and get another cornerback um i mean they, they signed a dory jackson but they also drafted aaron robinson a little bit later in the, in the draft so you easily have a three line a three cornerback set there so they got a stockpile of draft picks. They have some of the best uh, talent at cornerback and receiver in the game, which to me are some of the most important positions to have when it comes to Madden. Next up, we got the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is a team, their probably biggest weakness. It really depends on how you run your offense, but Jalen Hurts at quarterback. I mean, he's fast, but he doesn't necessarily have the best arm. So that's something you might have to upgrade with. But the Eagles, even the Eagles real life know that. So they have three possible first round picks next year between trades they made with the Colts and the Dolphins. So that's something where any franchise you're running, you're going to want that type of draft capital. They also had a pretty good draft. I like Kenneth Gainwell, a, a running back they picked up kind of late. Um, you can see right here, I'm not sure what his speed is, but he's fast. He ran a 4-3 something. So I would imagine his speed is going to be somewhere in the 92, 93 range. Uh, and then receiver, Devontae Smith. Once again, I feel like they went a little bit low on speed here. Devontae Smith might be one of the highest. I would say he's probably going to be one of the top three overall rated players when the game comes out between him, Jamar Chase, uh, and uh, you know Trevor Lawrence. Those are probably going to be, in my opinion, the top three overall rated players uh, because Devontae Smith, I mean, he absolutely destroyed college football last year. So I would expect, I forgot uh, Pitts too. I think Pitts would probably be up there. But this guy should be probably like an 80 overall receiver from the very first, um, you know, second he's put into Madden. And I think his speeds will probably be a little bit closer to 93, 94 as he'll be a really strong all-around player. I also think there's a pretty good chance that Landon Dickerson, the offensive lineman that they took in the second round, will have a pretty good overall uh, because to me, I mean, his biggest issue is really injuries if he wasn't hurt all the time he probably would have been a high first round pick or at least a mid first round pick i would imagine his injury uh will be pretty low uh but that's not necessarily something you have to worry about too much when it comes to linemen i mean the ninth, his injury would probably be like a 70 based on the fact he's hurt all the time but he's an awesome player to add to a very strong offensive unit already so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this uh you know i can rank top defenses top offenses all kind of stuff like that go more in depth i plan on doing videos like that let me know in the comment section hit the like button other than that thanks for watching man much it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below